What's up, Floater Gang? Today, we are going to be doing the roadmap. These teams that need, they have a long way to go kind of in their journey. They're not teams that are, it's not a roadmap to the championship within the next season. It might be more of a roadmap to success in the next five seasons or so. Um, with the first one being the very, 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 very good Detroit Pistons off to a great streak of uh, games, I think 20 or so in a row. Um, unfortunately, that's losing. In a row, which makes NBA history for most consecutive losses. Well, it ties. Or is that ties? Yeah, it ties. ties it. So They're looking game, to break baby. it. They're one looking to game. break it. They're, they're trying to break records this season, the Pistons. Um, they're off. They're, they're going really fast, you know, Detroit Pistons. On their roadmap, um, it's not really looking like they're looking like they're they're kind of crashing. They're going through a lot of bumps in the road. Um, Twenty years ago, they won. They were champions. The Detroit Pistons were champions uh, two decades ago. I'll get to that in a second. But the last decade has been a very rough decade for them. Through from Andre Drummond, Reggie Jackson years, Blake Griffin years, um, Christian Wood kind of came out in Detroit. It has been interesting. The question is, what does their map look like now, heading into the future? Deacon, what do you think their the roadmap looks like? Um, so at the moment, it's not very clear. Um, I they have so many issues. The roster, I know Marvin's high on the roster. They have some promising young pieces, but in general, they don't fit. Uh, Azor can't shoot. Jay Ivy can't shoot. Um, uh, really, no one on that roster can shoot besides. The older guys, uh, and Joe Harrison, Bojan, um, and then you know they got a lot of bigs, but the bigs, I mean, J- uh, Jalen Duran's very good, but he's been injured, and James Wiseman, he's not very effective, just being you know your traditional big. He he likes, I mean, he likes to you know get the pay- post touches and then do something, and then he he just can't do something. Either way, I think you got to wait this season out. Um, you know, maybe trade Bojan. Or maybe if you want to buy, I mean, I've been hearing that they want to get OG. And that doesn't really make sense. I mean, or the fit, Tobias Harris, yeah, I've heard too. The but fit too why makes sense, but you're losing so many games. I don't see why you would want to trade assets. But at the end of the day, I you th- I think you got to wait it out. You know, Cade was the number one number one overall pick. You know, three years ago. Um, and I know he's extension eligible, which might be an issue, but. Uh, I think you got to wait it out. Um, really, you have no other option except unless you want to do a full reset, you know. Again. Again. Yeah. Do, you, do you think they are truly what the record shows? Yeah, I think they're I think they're 2 and 27, two and 27 better. I think they're horrible. I thought it was interesting the shooting stat you pointed out. Uh, I, I agree with it. Uh, so the fact is they have three three-point shooters that shoot above 40%, each one with over 10 games played this season and averaging more than 10 minutes in those games. So it's a decent sample size-ish. Um, all three of those players are bench players, and some of them have gotten decreased minutes. One of them is Marcus Sasser. The other one is Kevin Knox. And the other one is Stanley Umude, who I don't even know who that is, oh, to be yeah. really honest with you. Those are the only three people that average above a 40% and Bojan is almost right there. We know he's a, he's a good player. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of or part of their thing too, as we've said this before is they just have an overload of guards. They almost don't know what to do with all of them. So in the sense of not re rebuilding, but maybe making a few moves, try to get rid of some of those guards for some forwards or because I mean, they have Ivy Hayes, Cade, all want to play the point, and but Sasser man. also wants to play the point. Thus, four guys that would prefer to play the point and probably be the best playing the point, but you can't play four guys at the point in a single game. Yeah. And so, they're, and they're all young, so they all have a lot of potential too. So, if you you could try to get some very solid at least forward pieces back, or just still building pieces for those young guys, but actually helping the team more because you can use them more and with more minutes and during the game. Yeah, but I feel like also none of them are really true point guards. Like, they don't have the standards for a winning team. Uh, None of them are that skilled enough, and they don't really play the true point guard position role in the NBA. Like, they're not playmakers. 
King on Hayes, not a playmaker. Marcus Sasser, not much of a playmaker. These are all scorers. Then you have Kate Cunningham, Azor Thompson. They, they're big guards, but they're not point guards. They're shooting guards, small forwards. Uh, so they really don't have a point guard, I think, on their team. But they also don't have, like, the rest of the positions properly set out. And I think that's their issue. They don't know what they're running right now. Yeah, and I think I think that's part of the, the issue. I, I don't think your point is exactly right with them not being – I mean, they're not the best passers per se, but also considering, like you said, the situation they're in, it's also kind of hard for them to actually show that they are that point guard and they can succeed in that point guard role because, I mean, Cade is their uh, number one option point guard, which is fair. I mean, he's proven he's a really good playmaker and he was the number one pick three years ago with two unhealthy seasons. So I see why they're doing that, but I, I think Ivy, Hayes, and Sasser all have very good playmaking potential, and they've shown some flashes of that as well. Yeah, they're you can tell it. Whoa, holy crap! You can tell they're really missing out on their old coach, who's now the GM. If he was really good, he knew how to play. I think he coached them very well and know how to use yeah. them very well. Well, so Monty is not doing a good job. I don't think anyone. I but I just don't see a situation with this raw. I mean, maybe they're not two and twenty-seven, but this roster just like Monty said. No one really has a true fit, obviously. And like, even if Cade could be a true point guard, I mean, he's he's not having a great year in terms of playmaking. But even if he could be, he does not have the piece. No one can shoot, you know. Like Lauren just said, there's four or three forty percent shooters, and they're all coming off the bench and getting minimal minutes. Um, I disagree and chemistry. agree with you at the same time. So, um. Great piece, not necessarily, but there's a big point. And here's, here's, I'm going to kind of give you some of my roadmap points, the way their map should look like. A lot of it has to do with that point guard, what you guys talked about. Um, so the GM needs to figure out what the roster looks like, but so does the coach. I am extremely disappointed with who he's giving minutes to. So my first one, or one of the, the points is the guards. You need to figure out who you want. This is the GM and the coach. Coach, who are you playing? Coach, who are you playing? Who are the guys you want to play? Who are you want to keep? And then you communicate with the GM and the GM does his thing and then trades the other assets. It's, it's a disaster right now. You have to trade Killian, Ivy, or Sasser, if not two of those guys. Ivy had a pretty good rookie season. The minutes are gone. Okay. That's all right. You have to, I'm, not, I'm not complaining about that. He doesn't have to have those minutes. They get him out. Get him out. Get trade value. You want to tank? You want more picks? You want to bet? Go get somebody. Killian, I think you're trading either way. There's no reason to keep Killian. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. He does he's not help terrible. in shooting. He's also, and then I personally, my, my take is keep Sasser. He's just a rookie. Yeah. He is a good shooter. He should fit in well with Cade Cunningham, who you obviously want to keep. Um, but this is on the GM. This is part of their, their overall culture, which, again, I said they won a chip two decades ago. Who were those Pistons? The bad boy Pistons. That culture existed for a decade or so, from the Michael Jordan uh, era to the when they won that chip, right? They that was exactly they played super hard, hard defense. I'm not saying they need to have that identity, but they need an identity. They have not had any sort of identity for the last decade. It's been random sort of rosters. To your point, Deacon. Um, kind of half stars. It's just always been in a little bit directionless. And so as much as they seem like they're fully committing to the restructure for once, which is good this season, let's get to the next part. Let's get to, all right, how can we tank maybe if that's what you're trying to do, but still get the most out of our guys, then get the most out of whoever we have and turn them into trade to, to, to picks. If you're not going to use Jaden and Ivy, get a pick. He, uh, he's got value. Other teams could use a point guard, a young one. The Spurs are one, for example, off the top of my head. Um, and that should be one. Then test trade value of the big. So they got James Wiseman. I don't think it was a bad move for them. Getting a young big, seeing if maybe he's what they wanted. It's not panning out. All right. So get value out of him or get value out of uh, you. Uh, who else? They have a. Uh, they have him, Stewart, Stewart's and they have Duran. And Duran, yeah, you Biden. obviously Durin. want to keep. Stewart, they're a little dumb because they, they lost some extra picks when they picked him up. But if you need to lose him, lose him. Yeah, Bagley. He's the other one. So having all those guys together in the first place, I think is a good idea. Like, let's see which one of these guys, like, filter them through. Okay, you did it. 
Let's get them out now. If you're right now kind of in there, you're already in, I would say, almost that first phase of rebuild. Like you have a lot of young acquired talent now. Nice turning your filtering out and turning them into other players that your young guys can use as either vets, as semi young guys, or as even picks if you want to kind of still be more towards the beginning of it. But it doesn't do them very much good to have all those guys rostered at all. I don't understand. They kind of figured out James Wiseman. A lot of people are saying they're not using him right. That might be the case, and that's fine. Honestly, it's fine. Get, bring him somewhere else. If other teams think they could use him, then the, he seems to have value of some sort. I don't understand why they need all those guys on the team. I think the issue mainly is team chemistry. Like, you know how you compare with the bad boys or whatever. They, they had insanely good team chemistry. They got their players to their spots. They knew how to play. They got each other hyped up. And I think a lot of NBA teams right now, need to fix their team chemistry because they have the players, like Lakers, for instance, they have the players. They just need to use the team chem or get team chemistry and it'd be good. But Pistons have zero team chemistry right now. They're just playing basketball. It looks like they're running a pickup game. Uh, It's street ball right now, it looks like for them. And they're just kind of messing around, not really working together, kind of doing their own thing. Monty Williams coaching right there. Yeah, yeah, Monty Williams. I I don't think you fire him right now at all. I don't well, think you owe him like seventy million dollars still. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think it was a the, one of the worst signings ever. Given the money, like to get him, it's all right. But given the money, horrible. He's uh, he's has little reason to deserve that at all. He's made a finals appearance with a good team. That's awesome. You should. But there's nothing right. Most coaches have a calling card. They're known for at least one or two skills. I don't know what he's known for. Um, he can have made an argument to develop them beforehand. I have not seen that. The Pistons sure need that, and hopefully he can do that. But right now, I don't think it's – like, give him at least another season to see if he can do something. But he's definitely not safe at all. Um, in my opinion, I think that whole entire office, right, they need that culture. And that's the thing. Sign vets. Or even if you're doing a trade or you want some picks or you want some young guys, just get, like, a cheap vet in there. They have almost zero vets. Vets bring culture. There's so many basketball players that when they, they're they retired now, they're approaching their career, and they say, yo, when I was young, like I was so – I was kind of cocky anyway, but I went to this horrible team. I went to, like, whatever team that was tanking. They had, like – the only vets they had were selfish vets. There was no culture, like no winning culture. I didn't learn until halfway through my career how to actually win basketball. The Pistons are one of those teams right now. They have nobody – teaching them how to win basketball. And I love Bojan, by the way. Trade him. Trade him, please. He is not – he's never been on a team. He's been on the – he was on the Jazz, and they're pretty good. But he has little, like, right um, – I think he's – I don't see him as much of a leader personally anyway. And I, I'm not saying he's, like, a negative. I'm just saying he's on asset. And he's not anything this roster needs at all. He's taking minutes. He's super talented, deserving of those minutes. But he has no place on that roster, on that team, to develop the young guys, to, to compete – um, and I think he would honestly do great somewhere else and they can get value out of him. So that's on that roadmap for me as well. Um, and yeah, so try to get bets um, that kind of build culture, that can mentor guys that know what how to put in the work. Even right, Kobe Bryant did that for LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and well, Melo, I guess, didn't pick it up all the way. But people need that. So to make it short, blow it up. Well, no, not quite. Oh, I, I say you give it time. You gave it the year. I I mean, at the end of the day, we were discussing young courts at the beginning of the year, and Marvin had the Pistons number one. You know, like I still think they have a lot of promise. I, like, I love their talent. I yeah. just hate like I want to see direction. Yeah, direction is perfect. Um, like I mean, you know, they're just doing a lot of like if you look back on recent years, like there's not like one move where you're like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? But it's a lot of just like randomness, you know. Uh, you know, Jaden Ivy Cade, it, it never really. I don't think anyone was like, "Oh, that's a great fit." Um, like and Ben Mather and was available. Pieces. Yeah, they they're just collecting young talent. Yeah. With that direction. I mean, personally, I want them to flame the Pistons, but I can't. They're drafting well. I think they're. It's not like why they've been holding on no. to Ivy now for three years. They they barely got him. I think they're not like super behind. I want to see him start making progress on trading, looking to trade some of their guards. Um, I want to see, honestly, this is on Monty. I want to see more consecrated minutes to what the goal is, to using the guys you want to use. If you're cutting Sasser's minutes a lot, then maybe trade him. 
Um, people have seen his value. But anyway, I think we can head on to the next one. Head on to the next one. So we're going to go over to the rest, Western Roads, Tonio. Let's see what that map looks like, what direction they should go. Um, I have a few thoughts as a very dedicated Spurs fan. But Marvin, I want to hear your thoughts on what the Spurs map looks like. Um, I mean, for them, obviously they need a point guard. Um, there's plenty of guys that I think would be perfect for them, but the question is, are they available? How easy would it be to get them? Uh, we obviously have Wemby, um, Keldon and Vassell have been, they're good, I think, pieces. Um, Vassell hasn't been shooting too well this season. Um, I do actually like what Keldon has shown this season. He, to me, he's shown that he can fit a lot more roles than I thought he could. He seems like he can fit kind of more of a playmaking role if he needs needs to. He's been getting a lot of boards in a few games, too. He can score. He's been solid on defense. But obviously, I think our biggest thing right now is to get a point guard. And Valentin's wearing a Conley jersey. I don't think he's available to get, but I think Mike Conley would be beautiful for the Spurs. I think he'd be... That's not really a realistic map. But well, for the Spurs, I don't think they need to go get a vet. Uh, well, I don't think they will. First of all, uh, it it just doesn't seem like they. I I think they want to, you know, see the vision of the Sohan point guard experiment or whatever. Did you stop that though. Uh, I mean, yes, They're but I, Brandon the point guard now. Well, I think they just want to give everyone. On, I think they want to give their guys on the roster chances to develop. Um. So I don't think they will go get that that point guard. Um, there's lots of good point guards in the draft this upcoming year. I think they're still trying to build through the draft. Wemby's twenty, or is he nineteen? Wemby's nineteen. He's super young. Already, I don't think there is any reason to rush. Or... I fully disagree with you. Um, absolutely. So there's like a stat that's been floating around. I love it. Spurs have missed the playoffs. I think four times in the last five decades, pretty much since they've been started since the Spurs organization has existed. And this is in large part, you can see it with Tim Duncan. Um, you can see it with Tony Parker, Ginobili. They get these young guys, they bring them in, and Kawhi was going to be the same thing, and then things went um, south. But they get these young guys, they bring them in, they develop them harshly, they make sure they're good defense. Obviously, they do the whole Spurs development thing, and they're awesome at developing players. And a large part of that works, and we just talk about the Pistons, because they have vets they are very they have already they're not playing completely losing basketball they have guys who take them under their wing they're semi-competitive and they're looking to uh accompany the heat all right now if you look at the roster and the ages and the type of guys they have they're awesome at this and that's why the heat's been very successful too they have guys of all ages to kind of keep replenishing that cycle they bring in those young guys to work with those older guys those mid guys are still getting better and that's kind of that system. The Spurs have been extremely successful at that, bringing Tim Duncan in under David Robinson. And obviously, Tim Duncan was super talented anyway, but they weren't a complete bus team, and it immediately got really good. Tony Parker, same thing. You put them in a hard position to play point guard. It, DeJounte Murray and Kawhi Leonard, the same thing. And that's just it's, it's successful. If you talk to players, um, they, they, might, they want that vet. It doesn't do a lot of good for a young guy to just be going out there and, and kind of just – playing meaningless minutes. So I think, and I'm not saying they're going to get competitive, but you 100% want to vet to help build that culture, to help teach those guys the ropes of the NBA. Um, and so it doesn't, I'm not saying necessarily competitive, coming a competitive team or making the playoffs, right? Not this year. Probably not next year. I would not be against it. But even like OKC, right? They're bringing Chris Paul. They had Russell Westbrook. They had Sabonis go through the Al Horford. Like they, they were bringing in guys in there to keep the team still semi-competitive. And they were making playoff runs. I think they had a few years where they didn't. Um, but it's extremely helpful. And I think it's necessary, especially right now, there's no reason why we don't. John Wall's a free agent. We suck at defense. John Wall's awesome at defense. He's a great playmaker. I think he would be awesome to to team up. George Hill, Tanishman loves George Hill. He's not really competitive, but hey, he's a vet and he's been known to be a good mentor. Um, Isaiah Thomas, I think it would be interesting. I don't know what his skill is like right now, um, but the most important thing for them is mentorship. But again, I think it's just crucial. I love, otherwise the Spurs, their map looks awesome with the picks. I, Deacon, I agree with you that you draft a point guard next season. 
but let him go in with somebody, right? John Wall or John Wall or especially George Hill, for example, is not going to be competitive, competing ultimately for his minutes or his job or anything. Like the young guy knows he's the point guard, but he's got they've got this George Hill guy. Hopefully, they can pick up somebody else to to still mentor this team. And hopefully, even if it's maybe like a John Wall, we float around D'Lo. I don't think that's a fit. I don't think that's going to happen either way. But to make them slightly more competitive already, and I think that would ultimately happen just from leadership, um, would be amazing for all these young guys. And then you have those picks, draft a point guard, draft defenders. They suck at defense, unfortunately, too. Yeah, I don't think it's a necessarily a bad idea to get a guy like George Hill, uh, someone who could you know, be a bench guy, be a mentor, whatever. I don't think there's need to spend either assets or money like huge money to go get a vet point guard um like a mike conley that uh, may not be around for too long you know um uh and like taking majority minutes from the young guys i think in the sake of development we gotta stick with it and at the end of the day these are just not the same spurs teams um from the past and so it's just gonna it's gonna be a different path um so i think they just gotta let it ride a little bit. Um, I don't really like what Coach Pop is doing. Uh, I I was talking to Marvin the other day how much potential I see in Devin Vassell. I think he needs to be shooting the ball a little more because we've seen what he can do. He can take over offensively, scoring wise. We saw when we played the Pelicans what two or three years ago in the play in with Dejounte. Um, he was the top scorer. For us, um, I think we need to use him more and let him shoot more. Uh, I think we are missing out on his skill, his skill sets. And Blake Wesley, I have, I want him to start over Malachi Branham. I don't think Malachi Branham is the point guard. I don't think he should be starting. Uh, Blake Wesley has the defensive side. He can shoot the ball every once in a while. He's a good playmaker. I think Blake Wesley could take a really big step into the starting role, and he is a point guard. We've seen him play, I think it was Baylor, right? He went to Baylor. Uh, Blake Wesley, yeah. I think he went to Notre Dame. Or Nor- yeah, yeah, Notre Dame. He was a really good point guard there. He's playmaking play- play- very well. Um, He's fast. He's really fast. He's agile. Uh, yeah. he's, he's just a really good athlete, and he can definitely play the point guard role. Malachi Branham can't, and he's not a starter, in my opinion. I think Coach Pop is missing a lot of his old talent, and I hope we're gonna see Coach Pop's talent come back. I mean, I think I agree it, too. Is just Coach Pop trying to adjust more into the the new NBA um, Spurs before. Obviously, I mean we've had shooters, uh, no no doubt about it. But for a lot, we did play more old basketball now, um, more of a passing inside the three-point line game, and I think he's trying to kind of expand that a little bit for the Spurs and try to get us ready for the future more of the NBA. And I think that might be a little bit of a struggle. And I think, like Deacon said, too, I mean, I think a lot of his, too, his developing the young guys with potential. He's not, though. And Branham, I mean, he's Branham has shown really strong. good flashes, too. I, I'm not I'm not a lover of Branham or anything either, but he has shown really good flashes uh, last season and even some good flashes this season as well. So I can see where that comes from from Pop, but I do think let let more guys get minutes and really just run all the young guys and see what they all have. No, I definitely I just I want vets and uh, preferably compare. I mean, Mike Conley. If I don't think we're anyway we're getting him, so it's kind of beating a I don't know a stupid horse. I don't know, but he would be awesome. Yeah, because we can't get him. I don't know. We can't get him, but he would be so awesome. We need like what we what. Our development has been based off of so much is competitive development. If these young guys aren't willing to compete, if they're not willing to go out there, get better at defense, get better at every single aspect of the game, you don't get minutes. You earn your minutes. And right now there's too much of right, – I'm assuming they're all getting better. I don't think the development's in any bad place. But I, I don't think, think it's where it could be. I don't think it's where it could be and where it, where, where it has been historically for the Spurs. I, I think uh, a better route than Mike Conley and more possible route than Mike Conley is Russell Westbrook. He signed a one-year deal. I don't think he would go to the Spurs. He's a bench player. He would definitely start for the Spurs. He, he's a veteran. He uh, He's a dog. He, he's going to work for that starting He's job. an energizer, and he's a team leader. You're right. 
I just very don't, motivating. Has wait, he, his family lives in LA. I just don't see him. I mean, I I think the only place I see him going back to is Oklahoma City, just for like a retirement tour or whatever. I think he's. I mean, just like practically, I don't think he would leave. But yeah, I, no, I, practically, you're right. I mean, but Russell it. Westbrook is my favorite player of all time. So if he wants to come to the place I live, hell yeah. But. I just remember when I'd, I'd say Russell Westbrook showed him to the Spurs in the offseason. You guys were all like, no, nah, he's not going to fit well. But now, come a long way, guys. I want d to go for him. I think Westbrook would be D-Lo, better. that can't play defense, and we suck at defense, which is unfortunate. Russ might be a all-defensive guy. He's not getting the minutes anymore. You should get both Russells, Russell Westbrook and D-Lo. I don't D-Lo like brings I mean, I, I would love Russ. I would love Russ. John Wall, too, though. Again, John Wall is honestly a pretty similar player. He, he'd be cheap. He's lost um, so much of his talent, though. We see him at the Clippers. Yeah, l- last time we saw him on the Clippers, he was... Well, that's why we use him as a mentor, not as a 30-minute player. Does he want to be a mentor? He's not He's playing, still better though, than the guard that we have. Really. Is he playing overseas, or is that someone else? Uh, or that's Kemba that's playing overseas. Oh, yeah, Kemba. I forgot about that's Kemba. Kemba. Look at Kemba. We see him play at the Mavs think, last season. He anyway, was- let's... Yeah, he, he, I love Kemba, but I think we need to move on over from the Western Trails of Texas over to the Oregon Trail, um, the Portland Trailblazers. What does their map look like? What to their promised land of manifest destiny? What does the Blazers map look like? Bounty, uh, do you I, have a map for the Blazers or Deacon? Let's hit Deacon. I, I love what the Blazers are doing. I mean, they're going to be bad this year. It's Part of the rebuild process, obviously, they just traded Dane. Scoot's getting better. Anthony looks like a freaking stud. Uh, Shaden shows flashes. He's inconsistent, but that's expected. He's hurt right now as well, yeah. Uh, Jeremy Grant, he looks great. I think he'll probably – him and Malcolm Brogdon, I think, are two guys that may get traded. No, I think they're perfect to have right now because, like we're saying, there's those vet pieces for that team. And I think they're part of the reason why – I mean, you see they both have really good numbers, and I think they're both helping the team grow a lot, too. Brogdon's been amazing. No, they've both been amazing. I just think – I think teams will be calling, and I don't think the Blazers – I think maybe – I think the Blazers try to keep them maybe for, like, another year, and then after that they're probably going to be like, hey, all right, well, like, I don't you know guys how... want him, we'll... I think they're – I think both their values are at, you know, their peak. I don't know how you're going to Jeremy Grant, though, with his money. Yes. Yeah, that's that's well, also an issue. Um, to buy services. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, but I think if I mean they're both playing really well. I think, I mean if you don't trade them, obviously there's still great supporting cast pieces. Um, but yeah, I mean, gosh, dude, I mean I love what the Blazers are mm-hmm. doing. I, uh, Amen. I really, I really didn't like the Dame trade when it first happened. I I didn't yeah. feel like they got anything substantial in the trade. I, I didn't think Aiden. I mean Aiden hasn't been you know dominating, but he has been. He's been a lot more dominant than he ever was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love I, what I just, they're doing too. Say that again. I, I love what they're doing too, and in large part to kind of yeah. that same point that we're trying to hit on the Pistons and Spurs is they went out. I didn't like the Lillard trade that much either. I thought it was fine, but I wasn't a huge fan. Um, I mean, no, I I really didn't like it at all. Yeah. To be honest with you, I remember like my first impression was like, wow, that was just stupid. Like they waited this long to get that return. Um, but no, it's awesome, and it's literally to the point, honestly, that we've been making. They have, they're set on young guys. They're using all their cap space, cap space right now, without really damaging their future because they can trade some of these guys. But right now, they got these young guys. Um, uh, what's his name? I don't know if his name Simon, who's been super awesome. We kind of predicted that, and it's like he was hurt, but he's been so awesome. He's your star. Scoot was it's been worse than predicted, but he's still been solid and he's developing. And that's what's awesome because he, he had Malcolm Brogdon. They're still they're playing competitive basketball. They have some vets on their team, some good vets, some guys that have been around the league for a little bit. They're using that cap space. They've got everybody. They can trade them. Um, if at one point they have to shoot between Aiden and Williams, right? They have two young centers. They've got that young star shooting guard. They have a young point guard with a vet guard. They have Jeremy. Like, they just have an awesome build of several different ages in their roster nobody really too old but you still have that veteranship presence and that competitive basketball being played so super awesome set for the roster and you got still good picks to come and you know exactly kind of what direction you're taking yeah you can mess this up in a few different ways obviously um to deacon's point you definitely want to trade um at least malcolm or jeremy potentially both within the next few seasons 
But I don't want to trade either one of those, honestly, this season, unless they get, like, a really good deal for something they want. But I love the kind of, like, just, right, you have a season, let it play out, kind of like we're talking about the Pistons, but they have a competitive season. Their guys get to play and develop in a on a, on a pretty good team for being so young, and they get to improve. That's really, really helpful Um, in the locker room, in workouts, and on the court. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love what Portland is doing. Anthony has taken a big step into this role. Yeah. Uh, Scoot, we're still waiting for him to start popping off. Uh, he's been a little slow, bad start. Starting to pick it up, though, throughout the season. Is he hurt? No, he no. was hurt. Uh, Shaden Sharp is hurt, though, yeah, Sharp. Um, and he was pretty good. A guy that Lauren was hating on, uh, well, am I going to say DeAndre Ayton? Yeah. Okay, that is his name. Uh, he's been really good. I don't know. I think I'm just thinking of DeAndre Jordan. Uh, but DeAndre Aiden has been fantastic. Uh, Lauren wasn't too good. Okay, fantastic is a big overstatement. He is not worth $32 million salary at all. Um, yeah. But, no, I think it's great they have him. I think it is. I think he's been solid. But fantastic is a huge overstatement. Let's let's Portland, uh, let's take it down a notch. Portland salary. He's, been, he's the center they need. He gets double-digit boards and scores double-digit numbers. And I think that's fantastic for the team. I think it's a great guy to have on your team. Um, but he has not been fantastic. He's not $32 million player. So I think I think he's the perfect starting center for any Portland team. right now. Or Portland. I mean, I, I think he's like the ideal starting center that you would want. Yeah, and I think the right way to phrase it is his development in Portland has been fantastic. Yeah, 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 based off what he was doing in Phoenix and the way he played in Phoenix, I would say his development that he has had since he went to Portland has been fantastic. I also want to mention to Mani Kamara, he's been really nice as well. A uh, young guy, uh, I watched him in the summer league a little bit, and I didn't actually know who he was until then. But I was like, okay, this guy actually looks like he could be really good. He's still in the sun. And then he was traded from that uh, Suns trade that they got eight and two, and I was like, okay, that's smart. Another young guy. He's been doing really good too. Not super uh, statistically, but just his effect on the court has been really nice, and he has been starting to score more as well. So they have really nice uh, depth and young guys, honestly too. Like you said, they have some good backup bigs too, and Duop Reith and Jabari Walker. They've had really productive minutes as well. So it's really nice to see what Portland has right now. And, I mean, the future looks really bright for them right now. I, I think – Yeah, I forgot to mention Sharp too. But – hey, Bobby? I think someone that they're really missing right now, and they had, I think, two years ago, uh, Josh Hart. Uh, yeah, they have five ones. He'd, so. he'd be perfect right now, I think, with their uh, situation. They need a small forward. Uh, they don't have a true – or they don't have a very talented small forward right now. I don't even know who their starting small forward is. Is it Thibault? Well, that's an issue right there. Uh, he, he, he's not Sharp. A he's not a scorer. His defense is good, but it's like Josh Hart's defense. Josh Hart brings a lot more. Josh Hart would just fit perfectly, I think, with Portland right yeah. now. Um, Josh Hart's – Probably my favorite role player in the league. They're definitely so missing out on player. Robert Williams. They're definitely missing him right now. Aiden has to That's take a big load player. right now for Portland, and okay. he's done a good job at that. Jeremy Grant and Malcolm um, have done great, especially Malcolm. Yeah, I'm always doing. A big missing piece in that Dame deal. Or was it the – no, it was the Drew Holiday deal, Well, which is part of the Dame. Anyway, um, is – yeah, Time Lord. I mean, he's out for the year, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but I mean, if he can, if he can stay, healthy. if he can stay healthy, gosh, it frustrates me so much uh-huh. because he's so good. But I if he could him. stay healthy, that's just a, another huge piece that they probably got coming off the bench too, which is mm-hmm. unbelievable. I, I or you have Aiden off the bench; he's been good too. I can see Aiden at power forward because he can that's, shoot. Yeah, I mean, that'd be definitely some growing to do there, but... Maybe he's in some lineups. Yeah, I don't think, though, yeah. Robert Williams will start anytime. Like, when he comes back, he's not going to start over Aiden. Aiden's been playing that starting role. Yeah. Robert well, Williams will just, just be coming back. For a while. <laughs> so, and Aiden's doing a good job. It's not like he's doing bad or anything in there. I mean, Aiden coming out of college said he wants to play power forward, so... Really, he's going to ball, learn to shoot a three ball, and then we can see about that. Yeah. Yeah, a little, uh, besides that, um, yeah. Uh, any ideas? Otherwise, we can move on for a potential future trade of for Malcolm Brogdon or Jeremy Grant of what they should be looking for. Um, If not, man, I don't, but it's something Charles I think it Phillips should be a little bit off. done a great job coaching them. Sure. Underrated. That's it. Yep. All right.
Let's move on. All right, well, let's move along that Western Trail onto the Pioneer Trail in Utah, the Utah Jazz. Um, their map, um, at first I had thought, I guess I didn't think about it deeply enough. I thought they were kind of just random this season. Um, on deeper look and talking also with some uh, Jazz fans, they're actually pretty well along their rebuild road, I would I would say. Um, I think they do need a star. Laurie is a number two, number three, and I think almost everybody agrees with that. He's not a number one guy um, on a team. So the question is, do they want to draft a star, which is kind of hard to kind of have to be lucky a little bit, or do they want to trade for a star or trade for a potential future star who then they can further develop? I think for me personally, that's my biggest question on the team, but everything else, they're honestly – kind of said about I'm still waiting for them to actually make some moves because a lot of guys that do not belong on the current roster they should get assets for in return like trade value like picks or young guys or vets or things like that that's that's what my kind of take is on them I'm curious as to what you guys think about the Jazz well so I think the Jazz they have the potential to this to decide this year's champion in terms of they have so many good role players that they want to trade or they're looking to trade like mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, Lowry's the big name, and we don't know if they'll trade him. Um, let's hope they do, baby. Okay, see. But uh, say they do. Uh, say if they don't even trade Lowry, they still have guys like Jordan Clarkson. Uh, he, I mean, he could give you big minutes in the playoffs off the bench. Um, you know, just scoring. And uh, the question is, who do you trade these guys for? Like, you, where do you see these guys? Where should the Jazz be fishing to trade them for, and what should they be getting in return? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe draft capital. I mean, they already have a ton, but might as well get more. I mean, we see what OKC did. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't think Utah has the, the same young pieces yet. Um, I still think they have a couple more drafts to go to get their their like total core, but um, you know, you get those young pieces, and then you still have a a, a ton of draft capital to possibly trade for a Lowry Markman um, like OKC. I agree, but that's where it gets tough because OKC, the only, they are not interested in anybody from the Utah Jazz except for Kessler or Lowry, I would I would assume, I would hope. Um, and then outside of that, right, you have the Spurs. The Spurs, I don't think they're looking to trade anybody. If, they, if they're, they're not offering Conte George, who would be about the only guy that the Spurs want. They have lots of draft picks. It kind of it gets narrowed down, right? You have the Patriots could offer a few picks. I don't think they're going to do any business with the Pacers um, because they want defenders. You have the Knicks, who we we talked about already previously. They want a superstar. The question is, like, a fit, right? Like, what map? Who specifically? Like, we know they're trying to rebuild. The question is how. Knicks? Or not Knicks. Sorry, I'm tripping. Uh, Hawks. Hawks, yeah. Hawks, well, I don't know if they're going to be looking to buy. They need a guard. Um, uh, Jazz. Or be looking to – blow it up. So I think that could be I I've, I've talked with a Jazz fan about them getting DeJounte. Um they didn't like it that much. I personally think it's a pretty good take. DeJounte is not very old. Um the question is how big is the, the rebuild the window of the Jazz. He could be kind of towards like the the second half of his prime, DeJounte, at the point where the Jazz will actually be good. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But we saw DeJounte phone good deep, great defender. He's not fitting with the Hawks, still playing really good basketball, and he was averaging almost a triple-double leaving the Spurs. So I think he would be a guy that could be really good at helping develop young guys coming in. Um, I think he could be a really good fit potentially. If the Hawks are to do business, I don't know who exactly the Hawks, like what the Jazz are offering the Hawks. Um, like who? That's kind of a problem. Who? Larry. Okay. You think they're gonna offer him Lowry? I think. Well, I mean, I, no, I don't think they'll offer Lowry for Dejounte. I, I think. I think. But I think the Hawks would want Lowry for Dejounte. And like. Yeah. Bay and then a couple picks or something. Yeah. I, I don't mean, know if the Hawks want more kind of three and D guys, but that's a little bit of an issue too that the Jazz have. A lot of teams want three and D guys, and they have a lot of kind of wings that are talented scorers, but they're not particularly talented defenders, yeah. and that's where they lose a lot of trade value. I think that's where the map gets a little more rocky. Um, then we realize because obviously, yep, you trade our guys, get picks, but how to who? Well, like Kelly Lonick is also another guy. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of contenders will want. Uh, I don't know what he's how much he's making, but I'm assuming his contract's pretty, uh, you know, uh, team. I'll friendly. tell you, <laughs> um, like a team like the Lakers who need shooting, 
Um, Marvin's you're making twelve million. Yeah, twelve million. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's very doable. Um, I mean, they just gotta got a lot of guys like that. Um, and then maybe like a guy like Chris Dunn will be available. I don't know how old he is, but I mean, he, I think he's on the he's like twenty seven range. He's twenty nine. I mean, he was drafted not too long. I totally thought that name was older. He was traded. No, he was the twenty sixteen draft. The Bulls. No, it was the Timberwolves. Then he got traded to the Bulls. Yeah. In the Jimmy Butler trade. Anyway, we're going down a random loophole. But, uh, yeah, just they got a ton of guys that I think a lot of contenders will want to get their hands on. So I think they, I think they'll have plenty of opportunities to get picks, or if they who, want. Which contender? Who besides Lori? Uh, well, give me names. Uh, Chris. Jeez. Oh, I mean, maybe the Pacers will want Chris Dunn. Uh, I don't know. Hey, he's a good. Defender. He's so off on shooting. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of other guys that would rather have Chris Dunn. Defensive wing. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I agree Pretty with you. Spot. I agree with the map, but the question is really how, because like I think the Jazz kind of know that, but who are the partners? Like, you say they have a bunch of pieces for championship winning teams. Who? What? What team wants a specific player? Laurie's one of them. I agree, but he's harder to get for any team because he's just... up. In a pickle, man. Like, I don't know where you go from here. It, it's hard to trade right now with the guys that you have. I guess maybe wait for Keontae George to develop. It, it's his rookie season. He's not doing bad. But how long until he really develops to be great? And then what do you look from, from there? Yeah. I mean, maybe Minnesota wants a backup point guard, Jordan Clarkson. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I there's obviously a lot of thinking. Yeah, probably Denver Walker is pretty good. You can always have. I mean, but I think they still. I think bench scoring is something that they could still use. You have Nas Reed, bro. Dude, Nas Reed should be started somewhere. Come to the Thunder. He won't start. True. I mean, I like some core guys. So the the Jazz have a good core group. A lot of those guys may not end up there in three years from now when the Jazz are hope, as they hope, looking good. Um, they got Ochai. Um, they've got a lot of young guys. I mean, John Collins. I don't think he'll stay there. He's not John that Collins. young. He's been paid a lot of money. Um, but yeah, you got Keontae George, Hendrix potentially. Hendrix potentially. THD is still only twenty three years old. Um, Johnny Juzang, a college legend, is on that team. Um, I don't know if anything is going to happen out of that, but they have some potentially interesting pieces. They don't. Colin Sexton's still young. They've been playing years seven more. They're still, still kind of a ways got, away, but they have some young poor guys. They still got use, Bryce Sexton. They haven't played him yet. Oh, don't they have Which, one, uh, one girl? It's true. Is it Bryce Sexton? No. Out of the highest state. But it comes to another problem that we talked about with um, kind of the Pistons. So they have, um, for one, the GM needs to figure out, which is Danny Ainge, the legend. Um, we can't have a trade of these pieces, but two, they're playing all these guys that deservingly get the minutes, and they arguably are keeping it more competitive. In right, Jordan Clark, all these guys that are probably going to get traded, John Collins. Yeah. But then again, so guys that you just drafted, like um, I blank on his name, Hendricks, they're not really getting minutes. Like so, these young guys that you might want to be developing are not getting developed. So I feel like as good as the Jazz are long, they're also in, like when I said, a weird pickle spot. Deacon claims they have a lot of pieces for championship teams. We are, have no idea who those pieces will be. Lori is a big value that they could use, and it looks like they might be. The other guys are all big question marks. They're all kind of up in the air. You want to get value. If you let them walk as free agents, then your rebuild is not really very much further along. They're not a free agent destination. They're also not developing a lot of the young guys. Captain George is well along, but they definitely have a lot of things to figure out. And Danny is one of the best GMs in the league, one of the most creative. But so far, he seems a little bit stumped. I'm not gonna lie. I think I think they're just waiting for the right moment. I think they will find a destination for all these guys. Um, I just haven't put too much deep thought into it. But I, I still think that they're in as good as as good whew, as and. They're in a good position uh, for them. For them. Uh, I, I still think they're in a great position. Uh, they got – I mean, I think I'm really high on Keontae George. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think – I mean, he hasn't been – Taylor Hendricks, too, though. Uh, a, a huge 
uh, statistical monster, but he, I think he's been good. Uh, Taylor Hendricks, he's going to be, uh, once he gets the proper menace, I think he's going to be a really good, a Jeremy Grant type guy or somewhere in that range. I really don't know what to say. But I, I, if I'm a Jazz fan, I'm happy right now. I think they got a good, good outlook. It just depends on what they do with those vet pieces. So the map has a lot of question marks on it. But I don't think it's in a bad direction. All right, let's head to the from the Beehive State to the Hive itself. Buzz Nation, Buzz City, baby. Uh, Charlotte Hornets, they are also an interesting team. They've been semi-competitive. I mean, they've, they, they've been semi-competitive. Um, some might disagree with me. Um, but the fact is also they've been really unfortunate with injuries. Which kind of also leads to questions of are they well what link what are they trying to do and what should they do? I think what should they do is a little more easily answered than what are they trying to do. Um, but between rebuild and contend, because it consistently looks like they're just trying to contend and not rebuild, honestly. Um, and that is a problem. And you have to and if you're if you're contending, I want to take you down that road. If you're contending, then you should still be making moves. So the problem is entries, yes. Yes, if you were healthy, you would probably actually be a play. You would probably make at least the play-in tournament. You probably wouldn't make the play. You'd probably make the play-in team if you were healthy. And I'm sorry, and I like the Hornets. I'm actually a Hornets fan myself, and I am sorry that they haven't had that opportunity. Lamelo has been hurt consistently, but even if they made it, they wouldn't be a contending team. They would be a mid team. They would be a mid team. So wow. why are you playing? They're they're not a team that are looking to even make the Eastern Conference Finals. And I'm saying this, and I, I know this. I'm admitting this to myself. I root for them. So why why are they set up the way they are? Um, like, trade to get more competitive. Like, if you want to be competitive, here's a potential option. You have some options. One is try to get past off Siakam. You've got several picks you can offer the, the Raptors. I don't know if they're interested. You can offer them P.J. Washington. He's a young guy. And potentially Hayward to make that the money line up, but you also give them those picks, so they might be willing to take on Hayward, and he's a great player. Um, you can also try to take the OG route for similar assets. He's a defender because they're lacking on defense. He's a shooter would look great with Lamelo, and I mean he can kind of do a little bit of everything. You can even try the Lori Markkinen route. None of those routes, from what I've heard, have been attempted. They are can all be attempted. They've got assets. They've got a few picks. I'm not saying that they should attempt any of these routes. I'm just saying they're trying to contend all these routes are possible, and then they could actually try to be an actual legit, at least playoff team. Uh, I think Trey, um, PJ Washington. Was he on an expiring? I think so. Uh, continue. Uh, and try to get Vucevic. I think Vucevic would be perfect right now for the Hornets. Um, the Bulls aren't doing too great either. Uh, I think it'd be really nice just with the uh, Hornets and Lamella Ball and the Terrors here system. He's a good playmaker. He can shoot really uh around anywhere. What about Mark Three. Williams? Huh? Yeah, they have Williams and Richard. I don't know if they want to trade. For I do like the core, and I think Mark Williams is one of the best young core guys they have, especially if they're trying to rebuild. Yeah, um, but Richard is a little more of a vet, too. Um. I think he just fits their role really nicely too. Yeah. Not to mention that Vucevic is being paid a lot more than Mark Williams. So uh freaking what was I saying? But uh I lost my train of thought. Uh sorry. The uh, Hornets, I mean we've seen the rumors that you know they're like potentially they want to look into Zach Levine, potentially they want to look into these other guys. Like it doesn't seem like they want to rebuild. Um, and we've seen them make the play in twice, uh, in the past, I mean, the play in just like tenure, and they got blown out by the, who is it, the Pacers, and they got blown out by the Hawks. They just, I don't think they have the, the tools, or maybe not, the, maybe tools isn't the right word. Uh, yeah, they don't have the pieces I think to go far right now, uh, at their current stage. I think Brandon Miller, once he you know gets to his full potential, will be awesome. Um. Lamelo, obviously, if he can stay healthy, but I think you know Gordon Hayward's on expiring. I think trading him uh to a contender possibly, uh would be a good start. Uh, I mean maybe look into a Rozier trade. I I don't know what his contract is, but he's a little bit older, um, and you could fetch a lot for him. He's having an amazing year, obviously, as we know. 
Um, I have some ideas for you there. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, I think for there again, they have got a really talented roster. A lot of it comes down to injuries. I we we I may be we may be on that kind of before the season. It's it was actually insane. People are so unaware of how many of their stars were hurt from a lot more than half the season. And they got really talented roster. First thing I do, rebuild or contend. Fire Clifford. Fire Coach Clifford, please. Fire Coach I don't know why Clifford. they re signed him. I don't know why he's in there. They re-signed him. They fired him because you're so bad. They're like, oh, we're going to actually get you back. <laughs> no, that is the crazy the Hornets... thing I've ever seen. They fired him, hired a replacement, fired the replacement, rehired him. I mean, that was, what, within two years? Yeah. I was... I think it was There's gonna be some fishy going on behind that, but I mean that's I guess we don't know anything about that, but that seems fishy. Um why was he not on our Cancun coaches, bro? He should have been. He'd be great candidate. But I mean if they want to rebuild, uh, this is I have trade for Rosier if they want to rebuild, which I think is an easier route. They've got Mark Williams, a young guy. They um they've got Lamelo Ball, obviously. They just got drafted Brandon Miller and even they drafted Nick Smith Jr. And I, I like your Smith a little bit in there who they have have two and he's just kind of been a great uh control player. But I think the biggest guys that we want to trade at the rebuilding are guys that are over 30, Nick Smith is that a have vet. a lot of talent. Did you call Nick Smith a vet? Ish Smith. Oh uh, Ish Smith. Okay. I was like, like Nick Smith just got drafted. I said Nick Smith. <laughs> My bad. But Rozier is super talented. We talked about that. I think he is honestly – he should be very, very much sought after by contending teams or missing a little bit of wing because he brings great defense, playmaking, and scoring from all over the court. Um, potential uh, – I don't know if OKC is interested, but they've got first-rounders, got Jiang, Man, Poku, who could all be offered to the Hornets. The Lakers could offer a first-rounder, Rui, Vando, AR – and Max Christie are all kind of guys that could be in a potential trade with the Hornets that were all young guys. Um, the Hornets were lacking defense. Um, uh, pretty much all those guys would bring that, and I Last... think it would fit really well in that system that the Hornets have. Oh, oh, the players, not 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 Clifford system, the player system Last that they I've have there. The the Lakers are not looking to trade Reeves, so that would be difficult to do. Um, well, like I said, Rui, Vando, AR, or Max Christie. Oh, you can take AR out. I mean, I don't think I don't think you're gonna get all those four guys and a first rounder for a uh, Rosier as much as I love him. That would be insane. Um, the Knicks we talked about. I think Rosier could be interesting there. We talked about guard. He does bring defense, which the other guys we talked about do not. Playmaker, shoot. I think Rosier could be really interesting for the Knicks, and they have first rounders quickly. Grimes McBride could all be in a sort of trade. Quickly, I think I've said this before. Reminds me a lot of Terry Rozier. But there's some I agree. flashy players, uh, but he's younger, so you're just getting a younger version of Terry and scrappy defenders. And I think Terry will be a better fit for the Knicks, who are trying to compete now. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then you even have the Heat. They've been talking about getting the wings. He's a defender. He's scrappy, uh, as you just said. They have two first they could potentially offer, or if they're looking at kind of young players or even a vet, they have Jaime, Larry, and Jovic. Those could be if the Heat are interested. I don't think that he would do that just because they have Hero. Well, who's their backup after Lowry and Hero? Yeah, but I think if they trade Lowry, uh, Rozier is the true po uh, point guard, by the way. I think Rozier is the true point guard. I think he would be awesome to play as their point guard. You have Hero, Jimmy. They would trade Lowry most likely Yeah, I in, in that trade. We, we've seen him be able to play make recently, so... He was a point guard. Yeah, I mean, he used to be a point guard. The only reason why he's not playing point guard is because he got he went to the Hornets and they had Kemba Walker and then they have Lamelo now. Well, did he get traded for Kemba? I think so. I don't know. So oh, you're right. Actually, <laughs> my bad. But yeah, but he said he had Devontae he Graham. Had, oh, and players. now he has. That's right. Obviously, you'd rather have Rozier play than Lamelo. Remember when Devontae Graham was like we thought he was going to be like a star? Anyway. He was amazing with Hornets. Yeah. Now he just doesn't. I have a few. I have three more or four more candidates. So one of the Nets. I don't think we need to go into that. Pacers, Marvin. He's a great defender, offender. Pacers have first, second offer, Nimhard and Neesmith. Smith. I think it would be a good deal for both. Can you shake your head? Why? I think the Pacers should just go after big wings. 
uh defensively yeah i think that's the, the biggest thing yeah. that they need I, yeah i mean terry is great but i don't think they should spend those assets and i don't think the Hornets would try to go for nisha or nimmer i think they'll go for buddy Hield. yeah buddy Hield. buddy Hield and i'm hard to be honest with them though yeah. That's true. I forget that he was an asset. And that's at first, so he's kind of these are just like different players that could, but he was definitely in there. You're right. Another one we talked about this team just a second ago, I would not be opposed to this, is the Spurs. Um, they've got lots of picks. They have they're by OKC is on a different level, but they're they're right behind OKC as far as team with the best assets. They have so many, it would not do them very much damage. Um Rose Deer is is awesome. He's a little bit he's not old old, but I think he's thirty one. Um, and they also have uh, just because I want him out of there, Brandon. He is young. USA he has, he has potential talent, so the Hornets might like Brandon. He could play next to Lamelo. What about Golden State? Why that's the that's the, that's the next one I have. Golden State is one of the most intriguing ones. So here's what they could do. Golden State is lacking defense and offense next to um Steph Curry. And I think undoubtedly Rozier will be really nice for that. Undoubtedly. So what? Can Golden State offer the Charlotte yes. Hornets? They don't have a lot of picks or really any. So it'll be really a player trade. And they also have a money issue. So here's Golden State. They have Moody and Kaminga. They probably want one of those guys, one of those young guys, or Podemski uh, in, in return, if not uh, yeah. several of them. And then you will probably have to throw in a Wiggins, Clay, or Paul to the Hornets um, yeah. just to make that money work. And I think the yeah. most yeah. intriguing of those, depending on the words, will be Chris Paul. He would be an incredible vet to have on that team and to mentor guys. It's something he's open to. However, I don't think he's open to that because he wants to – I think he wants to ring. Um, but he will be really interesting. And Wiggins is not even old at all. So they can give him a second chance there. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, I was thinking so like all, a, all of young guys. Like a CP3 Moody – First for Terry Rozier type deal. Uh, I I don't think Golden State the way, and the Warriors really don't have like picks they can really be trading like off first rounders. Yeah. That's the problem. Maybe like a swap. So it would be. I don't think mostly they're also uh, players. To trade uh, Podemski or Kaminga. Kaminga has been pretty good right now. I mean, they're both I, yeah. killing it in the starting line. I think Kaminga is more on the block than Podemski. I think Podemski is like really. I mean, he's been really good. But you're missing. Uh, really good recently too. You're missing the fact that almost everyone's on the block except for Steph Curry because they suck. So if they can get somebody to help, that's kind of the that's the penalty of doing trade. I think Pajewski is the, the, the next one guy, guy besides Curry that's like I, I, we we, we really don't want to trade him. He's been so good as a rookie, and I and I, like the Santa Clara NBA factory now. It's basically, amazing. it's amazing. They, they're just producing stars every year. I mean, it's been two, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to continue being three, Steve. Yeah. Uh, Steve, yeah. If you count Steve Nash a couple years ago. All right. A while let's, ago. Let's yeah. start. Yeah. I mean, they could even, and if they want to get multiple of those players, they could, uh, I think, for both sides, depending on what it would look like, you could do a Hayward and Rozier trade to the Warriors. Um, I think it could be attractive to both. But yeah, if it's like Paul and Wayne, it'd be. So that was, I think that's going to wrap it up. The road maps to each one of these teams. Some of them have a lot more road ahead of them and some complicated trails. But comment what you all think these teams should do and where they're at. Um, besides that, floater gang out.